Is the Finnish education system really the best in the world? Today we're gonna find out really interesting insights because we will react to the Finnish education documentary clip by Michael Moore. Let's go check it out. And make sure to subscribe to get more Finland related fantastic content in the future. Let's just cut to the chase and watch the video. Back in the day, Finland's schools sucked on the level that ours suck on. When they tested the world's kids, both Finland and us were usually about the same, you know, somewhere down the list of nations. But Finland didn't like that. So they tried some new ideas, mm. and in no time, Finland shot to the top of the world. Their students were number one. Good How stuff, did Finland. they do that? That was the one question I wanted an answer to, and I went straight to see the enemy's minister of education. Before I could say anything, she blurted out their top secret. They do not have homework. <laughs> Wait, so you reduce the homework you give yes. them at school? Yes. They should have more. Okay, before we continue any further, this statement that the Finnish schools don't have any homework is completely BS. It's completely false. I don't know why Krista Kiuru said that there's no homework, but actually, if you listen carefully, Michael Moore said after that statement, like, so you reduced the homework? So maybe they reduced it, but they didn't cut it completely. I've also personally gone through the Finnish school system and did I have homework back in the days? Absolutely I had. How much did I do homework? Well, maybe between 30 minutes to one hour a day on the average in the basic education and in the upper secondary school, probably a little bit more. But this is completely a myth that there's no homework. They should have more time to be kids, to be youngsters, to to enjoy the life. How many hours of homework did you get last night? Um, about 10 minutes or something. 10 minutes of homework. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes. 20 minutes, but not 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Well, if I would have done the homework, uh, I I think it would be like 10 minutes tops. Usually, I don't really do homework that much. <laughs> okay, this pupils or these students were probably upper secondary schools which is kind of like the same as high school you know the before university when i was at that level i think i did quite a bit of homework but the thing is that it's not as homework centered i would say maybe in the states it's a little bit different but the thing is that you can actually do the homework if you want there's no like, not really like a strict rules that you get punished if you don't do in the upper secondary school but really, if you want to get good grades, you definitely want to do the homework because that's actually how you learn. The whole term homework um, is kind of obsolete, I think. In that way... That Home, your homework is obsolete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In that way that uh, these kids, they have a lot other things to do after school. Like what? Uh, like, like being together, like being with a family, uh, like uh, doing sports, like playing music, like the older kids. How many hours a day did the younger ones go to school? Um, Mondays three hours, Tuesdays four hours. It varies. It's twenty hours a week. So they're oh man. I think that's true. You know, in the very first grades, there's actually not that much school. I think twenty hours a week. That's probably true. But how is it in your countries? Let me know in the comments. Now, does this three or four hours at school include the lunch hour? Yes. How are they learning anything? How are you getting anything done? Your brain has to, it has to relax every now and then. If you just constantly work, 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 then you stop learning. And there's no use of doing that for a longer period of time. Finland students have the shortest school days and the shortest school years in the entire Western world. They do better That's interesting. by going to school less. Yay! Just what I told you guys. Uh, how many languages do you speak? English, yeah. Swedish, uh, Spanish. Finnish and Swedish. Finnish, English and German. French, German. Finnish and English. English, Swedish and French and Spanish. <laughs> uh, just look at his face. In American standards, because you guys, in America, the first language is English. And English is a very useful international language. 
So in many other countries, I guess it's very normal to learn English as well. But in Finland, things are actually very well organized for language learners because first of all, well, the first language is Finnish, obviously. Second official language is Swedish. So we also have to learn Swedish. And then obviously we, we are also taught English. I was in my third grade. So I was around 10 years old when I started to learn uh, English at school. And Swedish was of the fifth grade, so I was 12. On top of that, so there's three languages, Finnish, Swedish and English. And on top of this, it's very common to pick a fourth language, like German, Spanish, Russian, you name it. And I, for example, picked up German in my upper secondary school. I was, uh, how old was I? I was like 16. And then at the university, which is a completely different topic, but in the university, I also learned Japanese. So <laughs> if you go through the Finnish school system, like from the very beginning to all the way to end, you will probably pick up a quite a few languages. That's one of the things what I'm most grateful about because I love languages and I kind of learned languages on the go while growing up. What do you guys think about that? How is it in your countries about uh, recording the languages? Let me know. So you were an exchange student in the US? Yeah. When you got back here in school, what did you notice that you felt relieved about? Uh, no more multiple choice exams. They no multiple choice exams here? Were, or, or very few of them, if any. Because really? they, all of my exams in the US... How do you answer the question right if it isn't listed as one of the four choices? <laughs> you write your answer. You have to know it. Yeah. You actually have to know it. <laughs> <laughs> if there was one thing... I... This is something what I find very peculiar. When I was in the school, all the exams... Well, we, we had sometimes like multiple choice questions, but the whole exam wasn't like multiple choice things. There was usually just a blank and you had to know the answer. You had to write the answer out. And that is active learning. So if you just know the answer if it's in front of your eyes, that is passive learning, so it's not really in your active memory. And this is how I was taught, and I think people are still taught in the school by having exams where you actually have to write out the answers. Interesting stuff. Heard over and over again from the Finns, it was that America should stop teaching to a standardized test. Get rid of those uh, standardized tests. National testing. The standardized tests. The standardized testing. What you are teaching your students is to do well on those tests and you're not really teaching them anything. No, we are teaching them. We're teaching them how to flunk a test and then a bunch of schools fail the test and those schools are turned into charter schools and then somebody makes a lot of money. In Finnish schools, we don't have standardized tests at all. At the end of the upper secondary school or like kind of the high school equivalent, there actually are standardized tests for the whole nation, you know, all the upper secondary school students. But aside from that, there are no standardized tests at all in Finland. And I think it's a pretty good thing. What do you guys think? But school is about finding your happiness, finding what, you know, finding a way to learn what makes you happy. They figure now about one third of the school time the students are in school is spent preparing for the standardized test. Mm -hmm. And so they've eliminated a lot of things that aren't on the test. So music is gone, art is gone, poetry art is gone. gone. Yeah, art in many schools. We try to teach them everything that they need so that they could actually use their brain as well as they can, including PE, including arts, including music, anything that can actually make brain work better. The children need to be baking, they should be singing, they should be doing art and going on nature walks and doing all these things because there's this very short time that they're allowed to be children. What the school actually teaches you is critical thinking, finding your skills and abilities and also finding your happiness and passion, you know. If you don't have standardized tests here in Finland, uh, how do you know which schools are the best? And You know, people need a list. The neighborhood school is the best school. It is not different that, than the school which can be, for example, situated in the town center, because all the schools in Finland, they are all equal. When we move to a new city, we never ask where the best school is. It's never a question. So nobody has to shop for schools. There's nothing different in any of our schools. They are the same. It is illegal in Finland to set up a school and charge tuition. That's why, for the most part, 
private schools don't exist. This is a, a very important topic in this video. So first of all, they said that all the schools are equal. That is true, because most of the schools are public schools. I have never even heard about having private schools in like this basic education level. So that means that all the schools get equal resources, equal funding. Of course, the schools can, you know, have, have a little bit of control, like how they use the money and what kind of subjects they want to teach. The curriculum is also the same, obviously, but, you know, there's a little bit flexibility and, and so on. But the point is that the schools don't actually compete against each other, for the most part. I have a personal experience, you know, in my hometown, there was two schools, like two upper secondary schools, and my mother rec uh, recommended me to go to this other school because she knew that the teachers were a little bit better than this other school, and I actually did how she suggested me. So obviously there might be these individual differences because, you know, obviously the competence and the quality of the teachers, you know, might differ from school to school. The closest school to your house is usually the best school. What do you guys think about that? In the United States, education is a business. There are corporations making money. Here, it's so student-centered that when we had to redo our playground, they had the architects come in and talk to the kids. For were, the they, were they listened to? Yes, yes. There are things on our playground that the students really wanted. Being in school here is more independent. We're created more like adults than in the United States. Yeah. I mean, we don't need a whole pass to go to the bathroom during class. Yeah. yeah. We'll see students commuting on, on the subway, yeah. uh, even as young as seven and eight, going on their own to school. We try to teach them to think for themselves and to be critical to what they're learning. We try to teach them to be happy person, to be respect others and respect yourself. You're concerned with their happiness? Oh yeah. What the hell do you teach? I teach math. So the math <laughs> teacher says the, 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 the first thing out of your mouth of what you wanted these students to get out of school was to, was to be happy, to have a happy life. Yeah. And you're the math teacher. Yeah. When do they have their time to play? <laughs> wow. What do you guys think about that? And socialize with their friends and grow as human beings? Because there's so much more life around than just school. You want them to play? I want, I want children to play. And that was the principle. I think the ending was a little bit more glorified and kind of profound, but I think it does make sense. I really like this type of thinking, how the schools actually implement. It's not about like learning homework, homework, homework. It's also being free and being able to play, talk to the other kids, try different things and so on. I think that's pretty good guess stuff. What do you guys think about this? In the previous video, we talked about why Finland is actually one of the best countries to build a life. I recommend strongly you to watch that video from here and make sure to subscribe to get more of these kind of videos. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.